Hi everybody! In the last video we went over the Ostrom core design principles and in this video I'm going to go into a bit more detail about how the course is structured using the design principles as a guide. This is going to be another list video because list videos are easy to keep track of. So let's get right to it. Design principle one! Group identity and purpose. The identity of this group is well defined. It's all of the students enrolled in the EVO seminar series at Binghamton University plus Mel and I who are teaching the course. Our purpose is also well defined. We have a group level goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by the end of the semester and that goal can be accomplished by each of you pursuing your individual goals to learn evolutionary theory and to make good videos. Design principle two fair distribution of costs and benefits. Being a member of this group requires work, and it will also yield rewards. But the work that we do, and the awards that we then receive, will be different. Each of you has paid tuition to be a member of this group, whereas I am being paid. Obstensibly, the money that you've paid will go towards course credit and eventually a degree, while the money that I receive is for the work that I do as a teacher. However, the work we all do in the class will be somewhat similar. Just like you, I will be making a video about each of our 10 guest lectures. I am responsible for giving you thoughtful feedback on your videos, and I expect you to give thoughtful feedback to each other and to me. We will all read the same papers every week. However, while the homework assignments we all do will be the same, we should evaluate them in a way that acknowledges our different abilities and our different schedule requirements. This is my full-time job, and I'm going to be doing nothing but this course for the next five weeks. I expect to devote maybe 80 or 90 hours of work a week to this class. I imagine that many of you have jobs beside this class, and might even be taking additional classes on top of this one, so the time that you devote to this course will be limited, and that's fine. We should only expect each other to give to this course as much as our time and our abilities will allow. Design Principle 3. Collective Decision Making. This course is being taught out of Binghamton University, a decidedly hierarchical institution. Binghamton has given me the role of an instructor, which means that I have more decision making authority than you do. Many of the key decisions about this class have already been made, and the course is structured around Binghamton University requirements. However, wherever possible, I want to try to make decisions about this class collectively as a group. This won't be so relevant in the beginning when your assignments will be fairly simple and prescribed, but as the course progresses, and especially when we start publicizing our work, I look forward to making decisions as a group. Design Principle 4. Monitoring. If we're going to work well together, we need to be able to keep track of what we each are doing. We're going to use some social media tools to keep track of this. Like, I want to make sure that you are watching this video right now. So, what I want you to do right now is pause the video and go down to the comment section and write a comment that contains the word purple. Seriously, do this right now. Write a purple comment in the comments. I'll wait. Did you write a purple sentence in the comments? Okay. Good. We're going to use various social media metrics, views, likes, comments, shares, that kind of stuff, to keep track of just how well we're doing over the course of the semester. I'll post another video in the future about details about how we're going to monitor each other's work, but for now, writing a purple sentence in the comments is great. Design Principle 5. Graduated Sanctions. The main form of graduated sanctions that this course will use is grades. Like I've said before, grades do not indicate how much you know or your worth as a human being. They are constraints to keep your work focused in the right direction. If I notice that your work is not contributing to our stated course goals as effectively as I believe it could, I will give you a poor grade and indicate the areas where you could improve. Grades are an excellent graduated sanction that I can use as an instructor to motivate a change in your behavior. But what if you, as a student, wants to change my behavior? Well, this brings us to the next design principle. Design principle six, conflict resolution. We should be able to take advantage of the hierarchical system that Binghamton University creates to manage most conflicts. If you have a problem with some way that I am behaving and you don't feel like you can discuss it with me directly, you can contact my advisor, David Wilson. If you don't want to bring the issue to him, you can also contact the university ombudsman, whose full-time job is to solve university conflicts. 
I've put both of their contact information in the description. But my hope is that we won't have to appeal to hierarchies to solve our conflicts. At its core, the curriculum of this class is about communication. That doesn't just mean communication to the public through YouTube, it also means communication with each other. I think it's really important that we cultivate a classroom environment where we feel like we can speak to each other openly and directly. So, if you have a conflict with me or one of your classmates, the first step should be to reach out and have a conversation about it. Most issues can be resolved in this way. Design Principle 7 Local Autonomy This class has a fair amount of local autonomy in that what we do won't be constrained by anyone from the university, but still, this is a university class and my authority as a teacher comes from that institution. There are certain things I can't do, like abolish grades because this class is not completely autonomous. Design Principle 8 Polycentric Governance If we do our job right, we'll be entering into a global YouTube community. That community has norms and values just like any community. What we do and what we say doesn't just have bearing on us and our personal academic lives, it relates to all the millions of people who use online video. All right, so those are the eight Ostrom design principles as they relate to our class. Even though we're all in different parts of the world, I want to emphasize that we're not just isolated students. We're a group. Let's be a good one.